my child was found in the Rimuru Dam. That dam, even if a bicycle fell in there, the person can still come out. But if a full grown up person who was not taking alcohol can go in in a Lexus Land Cruiser, the big that big car, and not come out, something is not right. Are you saying the dam is not very deep? It is not deep. Mm -hmm. You can even fall there with a bicycle tatoka too. Mm -hmm. But him and his big car, he was found there in the morning. I have forgiven you. But you'll never have peace. Hello Tuko family. My name is Kingori Wangeshi. Welcome to this episode of My Story. Our today's guest, Anne, has been through it all, here in Kenya, abroad in America, and then came back. Her highs were really good, and her lows were also really low, including losing a son, according to her, to some influential people here in the country. And even after going through all that, she soldiers on. Let's listen to the story of Anne Jerry. Well, my name is Anne Jerry Mwangi. Uh, popularly known as Lady Anne. The name Lady Anne is a trademark because my salons, and when I say salons, there were several during those days. They used to be called Lady Anne Beauty Parlor. Mm -hmm. So I used to trade. I'm a designer by profession. Mm -hmm. A designer? A designer mm -hmm. by profession, mm -hmm. both house and fashion. Oh, I can design a house for you, mm -hmm. and I can design a dress for you. Wow! And I think I'm, I'm very happy when and proud when I say I am the lady who designed the Nobel dress. The Nobel dress was the dress that the late Wangari Mathai received her Nobel Prize with. Wow. It was a golden dress mm -hmm. bound with black. I made that dress. You're the one who made it. I thought about the color and everything in her was me. Wow. I am very proud mm -hmm. to say so. Yes. And may she rest in peace. May she rest in peace. And she indeed. was a wonderful person. Yes. So my story goes as back as my childhood. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can begin there. My mom was a very hardworking lady. My dad was a polygamist, so he was mostly not, not at home. Mm -hmm. And my mom could not, uh, you know, just waste her time to see us not going to school. I come from a very humble, poor background. I'm proud again to say I'm a child of a bizarre and Changa Brewer. Okay. My mother brewed Changa, made the buza for the sake of taking her seven children to school. You were seven of you? Biologically, my mother had seven children, but we grew up knowing we were nine because mm -hmm. there were some other children who grew up with us but my mother was helping them. And maybe that is where I got the passion of having an orphan home 
-hmm. in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So as I was growing from my age three, I could see what my mother was doing. I was in nursery school by four or five years. And we helped her to, to, to do the changa and the buza. For us, it was fun. Mm -hmm. And you're still children. Yes, it was fun. But we used to go through a lot of difficulties because of police. I can tell you, I know how to brew changa. I can do it even today. I know how to do buza. I can do it up to today. But me and my sister, I had only one sister, and my five brothers, we've never tasted it. You never tasted uh, no. changa, that no. illicit bro? No. Not even once? No. How we would, never tasted it. How would Our you tell? mother was very strict mm -hmm. and wa was telling us the reason she's doing it. But you are helping her to brew it? Yes. Mm -hmm. We would tell a good buza by the bubbles. Mm -hmm. We would tell the conch and beautiful changa, tasty, by the color. <laughs> okay. As we continued with school, this time I, I think I remember I was in class six, and nuns usually were uh, patrolling, visiting homes of poor people during my time. You know, the nuns are the Christians, Catholic Christ uh, ladies who dress in white and a white veil. So they used to visit us. I used to go to a Catholic school known as St. Mary's Primary School. And so God favored me one time and the sisters asked my mother whether they would allow her to take uh, me with them and stay with them while I go to school because the school was within their compound. My mother was lucky. So I went to school while I was in the compound, I mean with the convent. Mm -hmm. So I can say, and I'm very proud, I'm a very staunch Catholic. I learned Catholicism with the nuns. I know what to do and I know when to do it and I know when not to do it. Mm -hmm. So as I continued with school, I developed an interest of becoming a nun. Okay. So when I finished my primary school, I was taken to Uganda. By the way, my mentor was a sister called Sister Redemptor Baire from Little Sisters of St. Francis. She also left me during COVID. She was hit by COVID. I'm sorry. May her soul rest in peace. Mm. So when I was taken to the convent in Uganda called Ngokonjeru, I think I was among the youngest girl. We were several of us, but I was the youngest. And you went to Uganda to, to train as a to nun? To train as a nun. Mm -hmm. So what sister wanted, she wanted to take me out of Nakuru life mm -hmm. and go to school in Uganda. But you cannot know the internal orders. So we were just seven of us who were told to go back home to be with the parents. Mm -hmm while we, we, are, we are learning and the school was paid for. Okay. Back so, here in Kenya? Back in Kenya, mm -hmm. in Nakuru. My qualifications had taken me to a high school 
So I went to Meningai High School and life was very good. I was very good in drama, mm -hmm. very good in art. And I think that is why I became a, a designer. Mm -hmm. So 1972, I was in Form 3. My brother, who was in Makerere University in Uganda, drowned in a swimming pool. But he didn't just drown. He was killed by Idi Amin. The dictator. The dictator. We lost my brother who had vowed that when he finishes university, my mother will never brew Changa again and we shall live the life every other child lives. Now I'm from Uganda, I'm back to my home. My brother is dead, so I went back home. Now there was no way for you to continue with your education? No. Mm -hmm. So when I went back home, we had a lot of challenges. My mother was broken down. She even got a stroke. Because of that situation, yeah. that incident? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we continued with our life and I thought the best thing to do is to get married and help my mother. But I fell into the wrong hands. My boyfriend was very good, but they were very rich. But when investigations were done by the family, I was pronounced a daughter of a prostitute. Oh no. Any person in the eyes of a rich person, any child in the eyes of the whose, whose father is not known, whose father is not seen, and the mother is a Changa and Buza Brua, that is a child of a prostitute. So I was one. And so when I demanded for a wedding, I had training not to fall into a trap without a clean wedding. Mm -hmm. So, just to cut you short, by that time you had abandoned the dream of becoming a nun. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do I go to become a nun and my mother has no help? Mm -hmm. My brains were working over time. I wanted to work. Yes. So, my boyfriend had promised to do a business for me. But here I am, a daughter of a prostitute, and the son of a rich person cannot go against the parents, the parents wish. So, what do we do? I told my mother what my boyfriend told me. In fact, I went to my mother. I was very innocent and I asked her, Mommy, are you a prostitute? And she was shocked and asked me, where did you get this? Mm -hmm. And I told her, those wazes who came to see you went back and said, I'm a daughter of a prostitute. So there is no wedding. What happened after that? My boyfriend was very bitter. He went and fought with his dad. Wow. 
My boyfriend was jailed for seven years. Mm -hmm. And so I left and went back home. So I told my mother, with this kind of situation, don't worry where I will go. I'll come back when I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So I left my mother. I came to Nairobi where my sister was married. By then I was pregnant. My sister took good care of me. May she rest in peace as well. She took me to school, back to school, with a baby, but I was able to finish my school. Mm -hmm. And I was able to finish a secretarial course. And I was able to do a hairdressing course. Mm. I was able to do a designing course. You're so ambitious. I thank God. When I did all this and I got my papers, I was employed. I worked for so many farms. Again, my story goes from there to J.B. Havelock. When I was working for this lawyer, I was the smartest lady in town. Mm -hmm. But one day, he was in a meeting. My child fell sick. I told a neighbor to bring my child so that I can wait for my boss to come out of the meeting and take my child to school. To I mean, hospital. to the hospital. Yes. Muzungu alikuja akasema, this is not a nursery school. Get, out, get the, the child out of here. It was very painful. Mm -hmm. It was a painful moment. Very painful. I called a neighbor who took my child. I didn't want to lose my job. But at five o'clock, I left and took my child home. As fate may have it, after a month, while in another meeting, my boss was in another meeting, his child fell from a tree. Oh no. My boss's child fell from a tree. Mm -hmm. He was in a very closed meeting. The child was taken to Nairobi Hospital. They looked for their father. I was the only person who knew where he was. Mm -hmm. Let me ask God to forgive me. Because I said, I would like you to feel the pain I felt. I never told anyone where my boss was. When 4.30 came, my boss came from the meeting. I was read with my resignation letter. I was, I was also in charge of petty cash. I was ready with my figures, and by the time I left at five, my resignation letter was on his table, and my account was on his table. I left. So the following morning, I came, wanting him to give me an okay to leave, and that the cash uh, business was okay. Mm -hmm. He called me into his office. He asked me, Anne, did my wife call you yesterday when my son fell from a tree? I said, yes. What did you tell her? I told her, you are not in. Did Honorable Philip Leakey call me? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him, I don't know where you are. Why did you do that? I addressed him very well. Mr. Havelock, son of Sir Wilfred Havelock, 
my son who has no father apart from me came here dying you told me this is not a nursery school you didn't even care to know why he was here your son was lucky there was your wife there was philip licky there was Nairobi hospital so please allow me to leave your office again this is how we are treated by bosses who think we are just poor people who can do any dirty job i wasn't going to be treated that way so i i, I wanted my boss to feel the pain i had gone through i think that was not enough he refused to fire me his wife refused me to go when she had the story but my boss has the reason to retain me one day my boss fired me when i didn't expect mm -hmm. but i told him i was already ready and i have already started a business and i want you to be my lawyer and i'll pay you that's what you told the employer yes little did he know i had a shop full of girls i had seven girls with dryers with chemicals with everything and my business was running and i told him i want him to register my business mm -hmm. how much do you want he charged me 2500 to register my business good i continued and left the office and i was in a house where i was ready to buy again i involved him i want to buy a property please come and give me direction he came and he was part of it and i paid him 50000 mm -hmm. you had saved enough yes my business was running very well this time i had two children and they were in school john and joseph but i didn't know my boss was in a lot of pain after i became a very well to do business lady i bought another house on gong road behind gong hills hotel and that is the time when i lost the first one the owner of that house wanted money deposited in his account but the law requires the money stays with the lawyer until the balance is cleared mm -hmm. there was no transaction in that house there was a problem i paid the money through the bank the money went into this guy's account but he returned the money to my bank little did we know that immediately we had had an agreement with this owner of the house he got a higher person to pay the house mm -hmm. so he was trying to bring in a case that was not there okay. so that i can get out for him to sell the house at a higher price mm -hmm. that is how our lawyers operate when we went to court by this time mr havelock was already a magistrate mm -hmm. and the case fell in his hands do you know it does not matter how good the case was but i lost the case because he remembered his son and the hospital 
he asked me one thing and were you at one time work, working for me i said yes would you be comfortable if this case goes on in my court or you'd like to go to another court for me i never saw the the issue mm -hmm. because i believe in justice so i said i'm all, i'm all right with it here but for sure he lost the case it is your lawyer who lost the case my lawyer was compromised and you're sure of that very sure of it all the papers i have any time i tell someone my stories they tell me all the time you have never had a representative mm -hmm. i fell in hands of gold diggers all the time mm -hmm. and this is why i am talking about my life because our children are growing up and i don't know how many people will fall into hands of the wrong people 2004 mm -hmm. i was a ready captain in railway golf club and i was doing very well by then we had already decided me and my children had decided to come back to kenya because of my mother my mother now was very sick and uh, had a pacemaker she could not fly so by now the children were big uh, you have taken us you have said we can, you came back to kenya yeah we decided to come back to kenya i right. came back but uh, they were still uh, going on uh, uh, going and coming back they were still there well, there's there's something that is missing mm. where are you coming back to kenya from uh okay the story i have told is before we left for america yeah mm -hmm. so when my children were in primary school mm -hmm. i was with my business mm -hmm. while i was running my business i decided to take my children to america mm -hmm. so th maybe that is where i didn't uh, yes. uh, cover mm -hmm. my son number one wanted to become a pilot mm -hmm. so I told him you can only do a uh, CPA uh, what do you call it PPL here that is private commercial license mm -hmm. in Nairobi but before he decided to become a pilot he was already uh, doing uh, his studies on and off here in America we were visiting America quite often mm -hmm. I was there doing my things and I would come and uh, spend like three months here then go for another six months mm -hmm. and come back <coughs> what are you doing in america i was lobbying for business i <coughs> i went to this town called uh, in it was in spain mm -hmm. and i saw a lot of ngombes they have a lot of herds of cattle I decided I want to come and do cattle. So while I was there, I had purchased a land of 27 acres of land mm -hmm. in Nakuru mm -hmm. where my mother was. I had 10 acres in Kitale. Before we go on, let me talk to my people for a minute. Okay. Uh, for the last nine years, we are now clocking 10 years as to go but for the last nine years we have transformed lives uh, through either the guests that we bring here or people that we write about on our website we have also grown look at the numbers that we have on this channel as well as our website and you can also take advantage if you want to uh, talk to more people to reach more people with what you do you can reach us on the numbers that are below here so that you can also now become part of the transformation of your life so want to transform your commercial aspects thank you now we may continue when my cows were mature enough i cannot tell you what happened 
but they started dying one by one. Mm -hmm. I will not say nirirogwa kwa sababu I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. So, before I could lose all of them, I called people and sold at a throwaway price. So that was the beginning of my back steps. Mm -hmm. The house I'd built in that chamber, I demolished it. My mother had a very beautiful house in Nakuru, which I had, I had built for her. Mm -hmm. And when my business started flopping, I told my children, you better take care of yourselves now. I will not come back there. I want to see what I can do back here in, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So by then I had two houses in America. Of course, I had a friend there. Mm -hmm. And my young son was very bright. My young son had a lot of energy and he could manage Nairobi and manage whatever he was doing in, in America. Mm -hmm. So when he told me he was getting to get married, I was very happy. So he came back and within a sh very short time, the wedding was arranged. It is bad to mention what I think. My son was married, get, going to get married to a gold digger. And I have no apologies. So when my son got married, we started playing golf together. And one day my son came very angry mm -hmm. in my house and told me, Mommy, what's wrong with people? This time I'm going to expose them. So I told him, I asked him, what's wrong? He told me, can you believe so and so telling me to carry drugs to Djibouti? So when he mentioned the name, I told my son, listen, you are a son of nobody. And if you talk about that again, mm -hmm. you'll be gone. So at that time he was... A he mature had... person. Mm -hmm. He was already married. Mm. So I told him, please, there are people here in Kenya who are untouchables. Please, just go back to America and leave these people alone. No, 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 mommy. I have to expose them. Oh, I was left crying because I knew he was, you know, those very strong characters. You cannot say no, you cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. So I called my brother and told my brother, please talk to your son. We tried in vain. So one evening, a friend was having a body of her sister in Nanyuki, uh, of course. It was, a fr it was a Friday, and we accompanied her. But that night was a very bad night for me. I was very uncomfortable. When morning came, there were several calls. So my brother broke the news in a very bad way. Mm -hmm. What did he tell you? He asked me, Anne, is it true? Then I asked him, what is true? By then, what I thought he was asking me was about my adopted daughters who were, who, who were, one of them was going to give birth and the baby died. So I thought that is what he was following. Mm -hmm. So I said, why are you so bothered about something that God can do, can do again? Mm -hmm said, no, 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 it is not about Samira. It is about Hossi. Hossi was a nickname for my son. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, what is, what has happened with Hossi? He told me 
Mimi Hossi is dead. Just like that? Yeah. So I just left the table. We were actually having breakfast. Tifos was just a few steps away. And I remember I was walking to the Tifos to, to get myself in there. You mean Thompson Falls? Yeah. In Yahururu? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't remember whether I was in or what happened because the next thing I found myself in Nairobi Hospital. Mm -hmm. It was a very bad time for me and I'll never forget it because it was hardly two weeks before my son told me about the drugs and I had told him about untouchables mm -hmm. and, now he's and no he was more. gone. Which year was that? That was 2010. Mm -hmm. As I was mourning my son, the property that I told you I bought on Gong Road had no debt. But I had given someone the title deed and I had given an okay to take a mortgage on it, I mean a funds on it. Mm -hmm. Alone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a surety. Collateral security. Yes. Mm -hmm. For me, that lady was not the kind of lady not to pay the debt. But unfortunately, she died. When she died, I tried following it up with the family. But the husband told me it is his wife I was dealing with, not him. Mm -hmm. I tried to go to court but it would have killed me because the case lasted almost 12 years. What? Yeah. From 2010. 10. To 2022. The story of a title was very early before, mm -hmm. but the lady died in 2005 or something. I mm -hmm. can't remember. Mm -hmm. And by the time we were going to court, my son was dead mm -hmm. and I was losing my property. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what I was going through. Mm -hmm. It was too much for you. Yeah. And that is how I ended up in this environment in Rongai. Because after burying my son, I was to be out of that house. You will be no you will not believe it that the family that I had given the surety of my property were Kenyatas because the wife, the lady was the wife of the grandson of Kenyatta, the son of Peter Mugai. I tried to run around to even ask whether the first lady could help, but no one wanted to listen to me. Finally, the man paid me some peanuts. How much was the loan? The loan was 25 million, and I never knew it. I mean, I never knew how much more the loan came to until that time they were coming to evict me because it had gotten to 76 million. Almost three times? Yeah. Why? I don't think uh, when the wife died, I don't think anybody was following it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I think the business which she was doing had already gone sour. But she was doing a very nice business. Is that why she, took, she had taken the loan? Mm. Mm -hmm. She was doing a very nice business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of business? Flower farm. Okay. Yeah. 
I remember even she gave me, uh, I went to France and I, I brought them some seeds. And one time I went back to France and I called her, I told her, your flowers are doing very well in France. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was a really good business. And uh, Was he your friend? The lady was. The lady was my friend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And how she became a friend is by virtue of the church. Mm -hmm. That is how I knew her. Okay. Yes. So here, I was mourning my son and I was losing my house. I came to Rongai and what I didn't tell you is that while I was going through all this, I had children in a home in Gedurai mm -hmm. and I was taking care of them. 27 children. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, I looked for a house where I could fit in and my pocket could. And I was living in a one bedroom house. Whatever I had could not fit in my house. Because you were evicted from that Ngong Road house? Yes. Mm -hmm. The reason why I came to Rongai is that the story of my son was so painful that I never wanted anyone to walk through any door to tell me they understand. Mm -hmm. No one can understand losing a child who was not sick, who was not knocked by a car. And you did not tell us what exactly happened to him? My child was found in the Rimuru Dam. If you know Rimuru Golf Club, there was a dam at, there is, oh, it, it is still there, mm -hmm. dam at, uh, I don't know whether it was whole number six or whatever number, but that dam, even if a bicycle fell in there, the person can still come out. But if a full grown up person who was not taking alcohol can go in in a Lexus Land Cruiser, the big that big car, and not come out. Something is not right. Are you saying the dam is not very deep? It is not deep. Mm -hmm. You can even fall there with a bicycle, Tatoka, too. Mm -hmm. But him and his big car, he was found there in the morning. So you suspect foul play? It was foul play, of course. I'll never believe otherwise. Mm -hmm. Because after I got little energy, I went there. And I tried to talk to a waiter who moved away from me. I tried another one, moved away from me. Mm -hmm. Which means they knew who I was. How come my story or the story of my son was not, n nothing was to be found out. That car was there, yes. Where was he coming from? How was he? Whose son is he? Nothing was done by the government. Again, I go there and say, if you are not the who, nobody will listen to your story. I tried. But whoever came to my aid was asking me whether I can pay three million. For you to get information? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there was some information that was hidden? Yes. So, even if I had to pay ten million, and my son will not be back to life. Is that justice? Whoever killed my son, there is God in heaven. I have forgiven you. But you'll never have peace. I'm who I am. But God knows me. My son had a wife who has never come to 
see me? I once demanded to see the children. They were brought because they were sick. When I prayed, my son, my grandson got healed. But that was the end. My question is, when a woman doesn't have a husband, why do children of a poor person just disappear without reason? Is there a law that I can have my grandchildren back? My son was legally married. I remember I almost walked out when we were paying dowry because we were asked for half a million. Dowries are not f for sale. You don't sell your daughters. Mm -hmm. But I bought my daughter, my force. I remember even the last visit where women take sodas to the groom's home. The family of my in-laws said it was not necessary. Again, because I was not a who, it was not necessary. But you have been working so hard for yourself, and you have made a name for yourself by the virtue of what you have done, uh, both in Kenya and in America, business-wise, you have a name to yourself. Uh, you have designed uh, a dress for Professor Wangari Madai the late. You have made a name for yourself. For some people, they don't look at that. They look at how single you are. So things are taken in a hurry to get out of your way. So I believe they just wanted to get out of my way. Mm -hmm. And to believe they just wanted to get out of my way. They called me after my son's death, to, not to give me pole, but to tell me, to ask me if the house I live in is in my name or my son's name. What? That is the condolence you get from people who do not care about you. Again, I say, my son was married to a gold digger. But I did the right thing. And I demand to see my grandchildren. I demand they grow knowing their father had a mother. You are their grandmother? Yes, I'm their grandmother. I demand to see my name in my son's children. If there is law, I will be happy if it can take, be taken up. My son had sold everything I had in America. I never saw anything from my daughter-in-law. All I know is People took away what he had in the name of business partners. Very soon I will name you. I know who you are with all my son's wealth. But may I remind you, my son's wealth was not his. It was mine. Mm -hmm. I entrusted my son with my wealth. So you will never go away with it. Please be advised. Come and see me before ex I expose you. Because very soon I will. Is it a prominent person? I'm free to ask. Yes, they are there. Mm. Mm. They are prominent people? Yes. And you know them? Yes. And they know you? Yes. And they know that what they have is yours? Yes. Wajiro. 
wakariga maito those children are my blood as much as they are yours i have 75% of it i only want them to know they have a grandmother i never did you wrong and if i did i'm sorry forgive me but i can't remember what i did may I have my grandchildren please thank you so much for your time uh, as you're talking you are looking or you're gazing in a thoughtful manner how has all these things affected your life when you have god in you he takes care of you at times i don't even know how i survive at times i even pinch myself to know whether i'm a human being mm -hmm. cuz it's too much for one person it is for one person mm -hmm. but i'm happy god says when you call him he will answer he has answered my prayer yes he has given me strength when i wake up every morning my prayer is my father in heaven you know me from the day i was in my mother's stomach you know my day you know my wish please give me strength yes. give me wisdom may i not step in anybody's toes i will never fear coming back even at 2 in the morning in this forest cuz i have my faith i have a lot of faith in my god and i don't fear everything that has been stolen from me i have faith i'll get it back i have never stolen anything from anyone i hear of women stealing from men i've never done that everything i have is my sweat and i'm still strong i will work you will rise again i'll rise again what happened to the children's home mom the children's home is still there as a building those children i call them my children they grew up they went to government schools i should thank all the chiefs around that place who helped me with food my churches although the neighborhood never understood my life because those children were very happy they were very beautiful well fed well dressed and all of them finished schools mm -hmm. at least my house was given a name by neighbors even when you go there today it was called a devil worshipers house and why is that because no one knew me because me i knew the office of the chief my house and my children so the the house is still there yeah but it doesn't it doesn't you don't run the children's the home anymore the children grew up left most of them had parents they went back their parents but they come to see me and the name that was given to me that i am feeding the children to give to the devil 
I'm happy. The devil has been ashamed because no child died mm -hmm. even today. Mm -hmm. All the children are alive, back to their parents, happy. I think I have three in the universities. The other people are helping me. One is in, uh, uh, in the youth service. Two are working and they are taking care of their families. Wonderful. I, I have two questions. Mm. You say very prominent people mm. uh, have your property. Mm. Don't you fear for your security and knowing what happened to your son? I told you, I have a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. No one would touch me. No one would touch me. Knowing what they have done to my life, mm -hmm. no one would dare. Because God is my strength. And he cannot allow anyone to touch me. He okay. can't. Okay. So after you moved from your Ngong roadhouse, mm. the one that you were evicted, mm. where are you staying? Where do you live? Uh, after Ngong roadhouse, I came to Rongai. I rented the house for six years. Mm -hmm. Nikalala Chini. Six, six years. Eh, six, years. Chini, six years with mm -hmm. my grandchild. Mm -hmm. And I have a grandchild who is uh, 16 years. Mm -hmm. She's in school. And Tukaka, Mungu wa Kanibariki, Nikakuja Nikanunule wa Zaziwangu in Yumba. I had little money that was given by that uh, man who refused to pay me off Gong Road uh, house. So when my mother died, my father was left alone. So I took my father from Nakuru. And when I say my father, it's not my biological father. Mm -hmm. It's uh, my brother's my mother's uh, brother, mm -hmm. who took care of us as a father. Okay. Actually, we thought she was our father because he was there with us. Mm. So when my mother died in Akuru, my father was left alone. And I was told he has not eaten for three days. So I came with him. By then, I had left that... Uh, house I was renting. I was in my own house in Rimpa. So I stayed with him there. And I asked him a few questions day by day about our house in Nakuru. So he told me, when your mother died, she told me everything in Nakuru is yours. So nobody should ask you. And so you should do with them whatever you want. So I asked my dad, would you like I go and sell that house, come and buy for you something here? He said, as you wish, my mother. Mm -hmm. And that's like exactly what I did. I went home. I sold my house because I had built for my, mother, my parents. And I came and deposited where we are today. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was here until his demise. Okay. So, this is where I am, although I have not finished paying. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how are you handling these, these losses? They feel like they are very huge burdens. They are huge person. burdens, mm -hmm. but if they were slow, they are not. They are not huge. So at this point then, Mom, mm. it's where you ask for the specific assistance that you would want to have from our networks? I am requesting, humbly requesting, any wakili who really can tell the truth about my life, 
without demanding. Because if you demand any money, I have to collect about 10 million or 20 to pay you. My problem is huge. But if you, one can come through for me, I know I'll be able to pay. I'm asking someone over there, please listen to me. I have all the papers and you can ask me any question and maybe we shall get there. Allow me to ask how old are you? Or how young are you? I'm in the years of bonus. Wow. I'm over 70. Wow. Mm. You're doing very well for, for that age. It's but God. again, it's God. For how long have you carried this burden? From, from the time I gave out my title deed 2005. 2005. Yeah, my problem started there. Almost uh, 15 years. Yes. Uh, I don't know. That was quite a heavy expression of pain. It's a painful journey, to say the least. It is. And uh, several losses, but when you get to a point where you're now sharing it out, I think it is the beginning of a new journey to healing, to recovery. Mm. And we are even praying for restoration. Amen. Because you worked for it, you should have it. Yes. And uh, our networks, I'm sure they will get in touch with you. How can they get in touch with you? Either an email or a phone number. And Anne's number is 0722-579-554. You can get in touch with her and then you can deliberate. I'm sure she, you have mechanisms to save people who may endanger your life mm. and those who can help you. Yes. Thank you so much. And we wish you the very best. We hope to, we hope for restoration. Thank you. Because uh, I think people like you are the ones that we say that are a blessing even to our generations. You shouldn't be going through such pain. Mm. Yes. Thank you. I think you've heard what our guest today, Anne, can do and the challenge she has right now. And I think it is one, one of the challenges is the digital aspect or the digital uh, concept in her passion, that is fashion, designing, uh, either houses or and dresses. So if you are like her and you'd want to get the digital skills, this is what you need to do. How do you get a start in digital marketing? You can start with this Tuko copywriting course. You learn creative writing techniques, social media copywriting, SEO, how to use AI tools effectively, attracting new clients and more. Enroll now. Tuko family, that is the story of 15 year plus burden of one Anjeri. And she says she knows some people who have her property. What can we do to help her get out of this challenge that she is in? It's a challenge also that I'm throwing to you as our viewer, as our follower. We have a huge network. Let's support this lady. She has worked so hard for it. I think she should have it. My name is Kimori Wangeshi. This has been my story right here on Tuko. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.